Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up in our news tonight, fire rips through parts of the International Bazaar in Freeport. Brent Simonette slams back reduction plans. The BCC urges the public to push back on domestic violence. Consultant physicians say that Junkanoo could be a possibility. Welcome to Our News Weekend and thanks for joining us. I'm Georgie O'Bain, topping news tonight. Police on Grand Bahama investigating the cause of an early morning fire at the world-renowned International Bazaar. Flames ripped through the oriental section of the bazaar after 6 this morning. According to fire services, additional fire trucks had to be called in from Barco and the Grand Bahama shipyard due to the magnitude of the blaze. The flames and thick plumes of black smoke could have been seen from a distance as passing motorists looked on. The fire was contained and according to police, there were no reports of injuries. Once a top tourist attraction, bustling with business, the International Bazaar became a shell of its former self following successive storms and the closure of the nearby hotel. Few shops in the historic site remained open. An 18-year-old man died early this morning following an altercation at a business establishment in Jonestown, 8 Mile Rock, on Grand Bahama, shortly after midnight. According to police, a group of people got into a fight resulting in the teenager being stabbed in the upper body. He was taken to hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. Five suspects were taken into custody and are assisting police with the investigation. Former Cabinet Minister Brent Simonette is slamming the Davis administration's decision to reduce value-added tax from 12% to 10% in the new year and to charge VAT on bread basket items. You're taxing people on their bread basket items. People who are poor, unemployed because of Dorian and the COVID, and now you're taxing, putting taxes on their backs? Now, I, I can't explain that one away because when the FNM was the government, we took a conscious decision not to tax breadbasket items, even though the experts were telling us that we should have no ex exemptions or no exceptions. We took a, sp a very conscientious decision not to do it. Last month, Prime Minister Philip Davis announced that VAT reduction will take effect no later than January 1st. Simonet also weighed in on the back and forth between State Minister for Public Service Pia Glover Roll and former Minister Brenzel Roll over claims that public service hires continued on and after the September 16th general election. You also look at the FNM before the election, they were confirming people who had been um, temporary workers for years. You've got people that are temporary workers that have been there for 30 odd years. They've gone through several administrations. I think in the last administration, the FNM tried to regularize a lot of those and make them P&P. &P. Simonet says this was one comment by the PLP cabinet minister that wasn't credible. He added that one of the biggest setbacks for successive governments is the 52 week program. One of the big problems that successive governments about government had is this 52-week program where, where governments would hire some well, if you've been hired for 52 weeks, you don't expect to be told in the 53rd week to go home. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've got to be real about that. So you're expecting to be hired. So if you regularize that, them, there's a, there's a real reason for doing that. Uh, so I think you're seeing some of the early com comments by ministers that may not have credibility um, when they do the test of time. Well, President of the Bahamas Christian Council, Bishop Delton Fernander, says now is the time for the Bahamians to push back against a rising tide of domestic violence. He added that the church will do what it can, but it will take a team effort to help prevent what he called horrific acts of violence. Our Jasmine Brown reports. The Christian Council president did not hold back as he insisted recent horrific events show there is something amiss in the country. It speaks to the rage gone a totally awry. Um, as people of the Bahamas, we must press back against this as a united society, that no more must we tolerate abuse of any kind to our minors, to our adults, to our spouses, to those that we're in relationship. 
Fernando says more needs to be done to tackle the issue and to make it happen. The Christian Council plans on partnering with other agencies. The Christian Council has committed to work and partner with all of the entities to do our part to make a difference in turning this time. Unless we collectively as a nation become a poor, we continue to go down this road. And as a Christian Council, we want to say this is why we do what we do and why we are here. And we want to partner with more to get it done. His comments came after the shocking attack on a mother holding her child on Key West Street earlier this week. On Monday, police said a man who was involved in a domestic dispute with a woman on Key West Street ran her over with his car. CCTV footage of the graphic incident was circulated on WhatsApp on Tuesday and sparked outrage. Incidents of domestic abuse have in the last two weeks been brought to the spotlight following the death of a four-year-old girl. An autopsy lists the cause of death as blunt force trauma. The girl's mother and her boyfriend have been charged. Fernando says they plan on hitting the ground running. Rotary is planning something that we're partnering with. So behind the scenes, before this happened, we were already engaged with the crisis center and Rotary to do something this month. Uh, this is the month for it. And so you will see it rolled out. Uh, and we are hoping that we could convince the powers that be that is a need uh, for soft training. That, that sometimes we build structures, sometimes we, we are building entities, but not building people. And some of that is the training of the trainers. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. The Social Service Food Assistance Program will be rolled out soon. This according to Minister of State for Social Services, Lisa Ramming. Last month, Minister Obi Wilchcombe revealed that social services inherited around 4,000 people from the recently dismantled food distribution program. You know, we're still in talks um, with trying to put together the cards, the bank cards. And so that's the process now we're at. So that'll be rolling out soon, I'm sure. So persons can look forward to a more efficient, effective, and a strategic way of being given offered opportunities and assistance from social services. The National Food Distribution Task Force was established in 2020 during the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. Roughly $54 million was invested into the program. Ramming said those in need of food assistance are still being helped. Even in the interim, we're still giving them vouchers as they come for assistance, so they're not being stopped because the program is stopped. Every day, all day, even at night, I, I got off late last night, you know, we had to find somewhere for a young lady to live and because of the abuse, and so we work day and night. And the Consultant Physician Staff Association not completely ruling out the feasibility of junk new parades during the COVID-19 pandemic. CPSA President Dr. Sabrika Pinder-Butler says the annual rush out may just require a little creativity. We have to think outside the box. Um, if we're able to do things virtually, I know last year there were a lot of things done virtually, even with choirs and others. So I think that we just have to be innovative now and see how we can make it happen. Japanese is a part of our culture. Um, and we've been learning that, you know, we have to live with COVID. And so there are things that we will be getting back to, but it's just a matter of how we're going to do it. So when, you know, you had something with 50 people, you might now have to look at having 20 people. Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, Mario Boleg, told reporters this week that plans are of a possible virtual parade are still up in the air. However, Pinder Butler says a smaller crowd and scaled down Junkanoo groups could also be an option. As a people, we've been talking a lot about us being creative about the things that we're able to do. We know that, you know, when activities happen more in a public setting outdoors, we're able to, to, um, to have more persons at events, um, once they're also still following those measures and, and not um, being so closely knit. Um, so I think that, you know, maybe it may be that we need to look to see if we're able to do things in that regard or smaller groups of junk newers. Well, still to come on our news weekend, a live wraps up its nationwide tour in Abaco, and Bimini residents take advantage of free testing. That's coming up when our news weekend returns. Twas the night before Christmas, but down on the beach, Santa was worried his sleigh out of reach. To make sure this Christmas did not end up tragic, he must call the elves to bring some real magic. 
They laughed and they said, it's not all about business. This year, we've decided to deliver more Christmas. With giveaways 31 days in a row, we'll fill up your stockings with prizes and dough. Then Santa kicked back, he relaxed as he knew. Rev delivers real magic and more Christmas to you. You're watching our news weekend. Welcome back. Alive wrapping up a nationwide tour this week with a visit to an island that gained significant mark share with the company. In the midst of a tragedy, Abaco has become a major player for the telecommunications company. Our Jerome Sawyer tells us more. In the five years Alive has been providing service in Abaco, the last two and a half have been the most successful, unfortunately, due to Hurricane Dorian. No, mm -mm. I've never been in our case before. So that what? Yeah, and, and to get called so that PTC wasn't working, so I had to go look for a live phone, my live phone in the hurricane. Because that's the only phone I normally use. You see, I still had a PTC phone too in the hurricane, but I always had my live phone too. And PTC wasn't working, and the only phone I could use was my live phone. Abaco is now Alive's second largest market for subscribers. The tower in Marsh Harbor is also the busiest of all their towers in the Bahamas. You know, Abaco is rebuilding. It, it's coming back. It's Abaco strong. And so um, you've got a lot of construction happening. A lot of businesses are reopening. Um, also after Dorian, you know, we withstood. Um, we were here. We quickly came in. The customer appreciation at the Marsh Harbor store was the latest stop on a nationwide five-year anniversary celebration. Yeah, congratulations but Abaco holds a unique place in the Alive Network in part for the customer loyalty they've built, but also for the growth potential in the post-Dorian recovery. This market is so important to us. Um, we have continued to invest in the infrastructure here and are going to continue. We had a really good conversation with the MP of Abaco today, John Pinder, to discuss you know, what his plans are for the future of Abaco, you know, the um, developments he's going to do, the businesses that he wants to bring back, new businesses he wants to create, and how we can actually partner and help him do that. The customer giveaways and recognition are just part of the company's commitment to the community. Their corporate social responsibility programs are touching organizations and people in a meaningful way. Giving a big thank you to a lot of the people that opened their doors to us post-Dorian um, that allowed us to set up on their properties, in their homes, to manage the business. And so, you know, what we're excited about is, and on this five-year journey, we are going to be extremely community-focused. Alive is a very involved um, organization. They're community-minded and they would have pledged that they want to be a part of the rebuilding process. Um, providing services to the homes that are going to be reconstructed, as well as being involved in youth programs, sporting activities, and rebuilding Abaco and bringing her back to where she was, and even better. Within the past few weeks, these family island visits have helped company executives to understand the needs of these communities at all levels, not just the commercial customers, but the businesses and even charities. Reporting for our news, I'm Jerome Sawyer. Some Bimini residents taking advantage of the government's free testing initiative on that island. Administrator Cleo Fernandez says she's proud of the turnip. We're here to get our testing. We must lead by example, so we'll be the first to get our testing in the Bimini district. Um, the nurses said they did a lot of persons already, but we're here to join the line to get involved, to make sure that everybody is tested and free from this COVID-19. Officials from the Ministry of Health and Walk-In Medical Clinic traveled to the tiny island to test residents for COVID-19. Deidre Fox applauded the initiative. We are getting a rapid antigen test done by the medical team, the walking medical team. Please come on down. This is such a nice initiative. It's free testing. All of us must stay safe and be conscious and mindful of other people that we interact with, even if it's just a food store. But please come on down and participate. Get testing. Doesn't cost you a thing. It's, it's a good idea doing this testing in Bimini because to keep everybody safe. 
A new partnership between Grand Bahama Port Authority and Bahamian investment firm Arawak X will enable Grand Bahama entrepreneurs to access capital to launch or expand a business venture. In mid-October, the Grand Bahama Port Authority's Senior Manager of Business Development, Derek Newbold, met with principals of Arawak X to solidify the partnership, which is anticipated to open opportunities for entrepreneurs in high-growth business sectors to launch their venture and, if they choose, take that venture global. Newbo said the partnership with Arawak X comes at a perfect time as many businesses are regrouping in the COVID-19 era and rebounding from nationwide emergency orders and lockdowns. He added, not only will this collaboration connect promising projects with much needed capital, it will effectively prepare entrepreneurs to pitch and sell the business opportunity to potential investors. Well, when our news weekend comes back from the break, the Grand Bahama MP says the island is making progress and Christmas coming early for Canoe customers. Stay tuned. Twas the night before Christmas, but down on the beach, Santa was worried his sleigh out of reach. To make sure this Christmas did not end up tragic, he must call the elves to bring some real magic. They laughed and they said, it's not all about business. This year, we've decided to deliver more Christmas. With giveaways 31 days in a row, we'll fill up your stockings with prizes and dough. Then Santa kicked back, he relaxed as he knew. Rev delivers real magic and more Christmas to you. You're watching our news, the weekend edition. Welcome back. Central Grand Bahama MP Iram Lewis is hopeful that the government will continue with plans that the former administration left in place for the rebound of Grand Bahama post -Torian. Be hopeful that those projects that we left in place, um, the government is continuous and, and will continue on with those, those initiatives. Um, several things that we did that I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the now administration, we are continuing on with it. Um, some of the projects in terms of development of downtown Freeport, um, we're still pushing the hotel uh, initiative. Um, the, the cruise port is still on the table. Um, they have not pulled that. The air, airport authority, we're still looking for um, the, the correct fit and sure to be up a development uh, for the Freeport International Airport. So um, the future is bright. Uh, and I, I do believe that in short order, we'll see a turnaround in the island of Grand Bahama. According to Lewis, the current projections show a positive rebound for the nation's second city. We do believe that Grand Bahama, the economy will rebound. The whole the island was, was rebounding very well. The whole country was moving until the pandemic hit. But slowly we are being pulled out of that. And I do believe that um, uh, the, outlook, the, the future is bright. We have some systems in place, some policies in place, our former administration, that is now bearing fruit. Um, when you look at the central bank report, we look at our, 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 um, uh, our financial projections. We are way ahead of, of what the initial projections were. As the season of giving approaches, Canoe Chief Marketing Officer Khalil Brathwaite says that the digital payment provider is spreading holiday cheer to its loyal customers and members of the community. We have some very cool key promotions geared around that. So we have clusters of merchants of where people like to shop. You'll be able to win a gift card and shop there. And in terms of specific promotions, well, you know, I got to save some of the sizzle, some of the excitement. But um, look forward to gift cards. Look forward to connectivity. Look forward to more experience-oriented things. And as we get into the season of giving, we're going to get more into the season of giving back. To avoid falling victim to crime, Canoe is encouraging consumers to carry less cash and to download the digital wallet app. I think because we're so ahead of the curve, people don't understand the checks and balances that exist in the app itself. So you have the safety of your phone actually getting into the phone itself, then the app itself has its two-factor authentication to actually get in, and then you actually have wallet access, which has its own set of pins and OTP codes, but it's, it's super, super safe because at the end of the day, having money in itself is a risk. Having cars in itself is a risk. And the reason digital platforms have hold value is because the hardware is the phone, but the software is really the app. Well, up next, we count down the most memorable quotes of the week. Stay with us. Was the night before Christmas, but down on the beach, Santa was worried his sleigh out of reach. To make sure this Christmas did not end up tragic, he must call the elves to bring some real magic. 
They laughed and they said, it's not all about business. This year, we've decided to deliver more Christmas. With giveaways 31 days in a row, we'll fill up your stockings with prizes and dough. Then Santa kicked back. He relaxed as he knew. Rev delivers real magic and more Christmas to you. Welcome back to our News Weekend. It's that time when we take a look at some of the most memorable quotes and moments in news over the last week. First up is Minister of State for Public Service Pia glover Roll, who announced a freeze on public service hires as the government looks into hires made on Election Day. There has been engagement into the public service on the day of election and even days after election when the government would have obviously been changed. So those in particular we would be looking at to ensure that the proper methodology of engagement was engaged. There are a few um, and as a result we have to do what is best for the taxpayers' money and we may have to disengage some of those persons. The second quote comes from Free National Movement Chairman Carl Kilmer, who called on party members to stop cannibalizing each other. We are one big family, and at the end of the day, we are all to become government. And at the end of the day, we cannot continue to just cannibalize, cannibalize of each other. And a heated back and forth between members of parliament takes the top spot. The exchange between St. Barnabas MP Shannon Don Cartwright and Golden Isles MP Vaughn Miller made headlines. It was low down, it was dirty, it was underhanded, it was egregious what they did to me. And I will bring the evidence in this house to demonstrate it. It was very personal. The member can surely make the statement, if he wishes, that he doesn't feel that he was dealt with fairly. Dealt with fairly. I have no issues with that. But to suggest that this member tried personally, Madam Speaker, tried personally to deprive or disadvantage the member. I've not been about that in politics. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our news this weekend. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Georgie O'Bain, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.